What's up YouTube, and in today's video we're going to be creating a custom enchantment system. This will be quite complex, but we'll start off simple and improve our system throughout the video. So let's get started. But first of all, let's try to get a simple concept on how this even works. So the very first thing that you want to do is import the world to use the entity hurt event, which will basically fire whenever we hit an entity. From there we want to actually get the player who made the hit. We can do that by using the damaging entity property from the damage source from the event callback. Next we want to check if the damaging entity was even a player, because other entities can hit too. We can do that by checking for the instance, and if it's not a player, then we just return. We are comparing it to the player class, which we also have to import. Next we wanna get the container of the player. This will be useful to manipulate the player's inventory items. We can also help our editor out by saying that this is even a container, because the editor doesn't know that yet. So we also import that of course. Now we wanna get the weapon that the player is currently holding. We'll do that by using the getItem method from the container, with the slot being the player selected slot, which is, well, just the selected slot of the player. Next we wanna grab the lore of the item. This is where we will be storing our enchantments in. First we'll make a very simple example. Since lore is an array with each line being another element in the array, we just check if the very first element inside that array includes the string explode. After that, we'll just run this function which will basically create an explosion. We will create the explosion at the player's head location and with a strength of 1. The player.head location will change in the newer versions, so if that doesn't work for you, try the player.location. This would already be enough to make some kind of custom enchantment system, but we'll improve on that later. But before that, let's add a system where we can actually apply the enchantment to. For that, I'm just gonna use the before chat event, but I highly encourage you guys to make your own system to apply the enchantment. Then we'll just get the player whoever sent the message, and also get their held item as shown above. So we can just copy and paste that. Now we just update the lore for the item, as shown in another video where I explain on how to set the lore for an item, and set the container back to the updated item. Now whenever we type something in the chat, our item gets updated with the lore. And now whenever we hit an entity, it will create an explosion. Now that we got the basic concept, let's try to complicate it a bit more. The first thing that we want to do is make use of a class. Inside that class, we create a static list. The static keyword exposes the property to the class itself, so we don't have to create an instance of that class. And that just means that we can access the list by typing custom enchantments.list. Now we'll create a static method which will basically handle all our custom enchantments. The procedure is simple. We'll just give it an enchantment name and a callback, a function that gets executed whenever the enchantment is being present. And now we'll just add the enchantment name and the callback to the list. Now let's describe what the function actually does. This is not really necessary, but it helps us to pass in the right types to the method. The first argument for the method will just be the enchantment's name, a string. The second argument will be a bit harder, because in this case it's a function where the first argument is the entity hurt event and the second one will be the enchantment's level. And of course don't forget the import for the JS doc of course. So now let's actually check the lore for the enchantment. As you guys can see, I used the for loop instead of checking for only a specific index for the array. So what we'll do is we'll use our list from the custom enchantments class and find the enchantment that is currently being looped through. If there is no enchantment with that name, we just continue. Now we want to separate the enchantment's level from the actual enchantment's name. We'll do that by parsing the number from the enchantment string with the length of the actual enchantment's name. But what if you want to use Roman numerals? We will just not parse the end of it and use dot .trim to remove the space that is between the enchantment's name and the Roman numeral. Let's update the JS doc so it knows that the second argument can actually also be a string in form of, well, the Roman numeral. 
Now when all that fails, we're just gonna return zero. Now this is where all the magic happens, because now we're gonna call the callback with the entity heard event callback and the level of the item enchantment. Now we have all the systems done that we need, now we can actually start adding our own enchantments to the game. In this case, I will add an enchantment called explode and do something with that. We'll just reuse the code that we used earlier, but make the explosion strength be dependent on the enchantment's level. Now the only thing that we have to do is add a level to our enchantment. Let's actually add another enchantment. I'm gonna call this enchantment strength. And this will just add the strength effect to the player based on the enchantment's level. Let's add the effect type to our inputs and that should be it for the code. Now after I hit an enemy, I get the strength effect and the enemy explodes. How cool is that? And now we'll remove one enchantment. And now when we enchant the item again, you guys can see that we only get the strength effect. And that's actually it with the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And bye.